Good morning, guys, and it is a good morning. It is the morning of Saturday, February the 24th, 2023, and in this video, I want to go over a short presentation, uh, some of my thoughts on how much of ICT is real, how much you should be uh, buying into it, and how much you should be somewhat skeptical. Um, I, of course, guys, follow the teachings of Michael Huddleston, uh, Inner Circle Trader, and so I'm, I'm biased in this presentation, but I want to give you a little bit more of an objective look um, at things because I think that that's important. So these slides are just going to be uh, a sort of prompt for me to speak, on the, to speak on the issue, and so I've titled the presentation, How Much of ICT is Real? Okay, so ICT Reality. We're going to start with some of ICT's claims, market observations, ICT personality and personal stuff, and then we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what is affiliate marketing, what is digital marketing, and um, some of the things that you can do potentially to learn from ICT in ways that are not directly related to trading exactly. So ICT fact versus fiction. What should you believe and what should you be skeptical of? As with any online personality or online trading guru, so you should approach ICT with reason skepticism. As a longtime devotee to ICT, I will give you my opinion on the subject. Market claims and market uh, observations. ICT's basic claims on day trading. So ICT has two basic claims on day trading, which is the market is driven on number one, inefficiencies and on liquidity. And so I've taken this very quick screenshot and, show, and shown you that, guys, I think that the basic premise is pretty well settled that liquidity influences the market. And then I think at some point, even classic sort of technical analysis is going to change over time to show that high frequency trading algorithms do operate at least somewhat on market inefficiency. So where the market has inefficiently delivered price. I think that um, these two claims, you're, guys, you're going to find that virtually any modern trading system discusses the concept of liquidity, and a lot of trading systems are starting to talk about inefficiencies in the marketplace as well. So these two basic claims, I think, are solid, reasoned advice. I, I think as a modern day trader, you cannot uh, reasonably ignore that, that there's liquidity in the market and that the market is looking to find that liquidity. What do I mean by liquidity? Resting orders in the marketplace. Where are the resting orders in the marketplace? Well, download a tool like Bookmap or a level two, and you will always find that above prior highs and below prior lows, all right, especially on the daily time frame, you're going to find significant amounts of resting orders. Those orders are resting in the marketplace ready to be countered by opposing orders. So for every buy, there must be a sell, and for every sell, there must be a, a, a buy. All right, so orders have to be matched. Um, orders matching, guys, is not a new concept. It's not something that ICT came up with, but it is something that I think that he discusses well. Um, put out any, any high or any relative equal highs and lows on any given time frame on a futures chart, and you will find that the market drives to those points of interest. It likes to dip below uh, short-term lows and then run on short-term highs. Dip below short-term lows, run on short-term highs. This sort of stair-step pattern is a very well-known phenomenon. And uh, what I implore you is, uh, even if you think that ICT is a scammer or you think ICT is full of it, don't ignore some of the basic fundamental premises because I believe them to be largely true. The market is driven on liquidity, at least to some extent, and the market is driven uh, by inefficiency, at least to some extent. So I think that those two basic claims are uh, solid and observable market behavior. So can I trust ICT's basic claims about the markets? ICT's basic claim about the markets is that it is driven on one, seeking liquidity, and two, making prior inefficiencies efficient. In my opinion, these claims are largely reliable and borne out over time. Uh, having watched the market day in and day out for a long time now, what I can tell you is that you will see this play out again and again and again, that the market drives on prior highs, it drives on prior lows, it oftentimes turns around right after it takes out uh, a pool of resting orders, and it oftentimes, guys, tends to do it at the exact time of the day. Uh, which again, it sort of makes sense that a lot of this is automated 
uh, considering how much of the volume in the market and how much capital is moved around based on high frequency trading algorithms or, or auto traders, so to speak, right? Computerized trading systems. So guys, a lot of that to me, those basic claims uh, make sense. And I would not throw out the baby with the bathwater, even if you don't like ICT. I think those basic claims are, are true. Now let's talk a little bit about uh, ICT. He's not Walt Disney. Uh, I'm not even going to save this presentation, so you know you can uh, tell how many slides I have, how much I can, you know. Anyways, uh, so guys, ICT is an interesting character with a lot of interesting personal claims. Um, if you read some of his history on Baby Pips, um, a lot of it is pretty out there. Pretty bizarre stuff, frankly, and how much of that you can actually take as truth, I don't know. But it really doesn't matter. Um, to your day-to-day -day success, discipline, trading performance, or how you understand the market, really any of ICT's sort of personal quirks or uh, any of his personal stuff is really irrelevant. It's not going to make any difference to how you perform in your trading. Uh, trading is not a spectator sport. You are here to try and make money. That is it. You're here to try and build wealth over time, uh, hopefully to enjoy the process and to scale up your account over time responsibly and, and with discipline. And so, guys, what I would say is that a lot of the personal stuff uh, is probably not true. Uh, he's pretty personally out there, but then again, I think a lot of people that have made serious breakthroughs in certain industries tend to be pretty quirky. Okay, guys, I want to talk about the third thing now, and that's understanding affiliate marketing and where ICT derives at least a lot of his income. So number one, he ran personal mentorships, uh, which I think I think the cost was about $140 or $150 per person per month. Uh, and I think he had a few hundred students for at least a few years. And so if you, if you end up doing the math on when he did run his paid memberships, it would have uh, come out to somewhere in the neighborhood of about $8 million dollars. Uh, which is good for him. Um, he deserves to make an income, and I really don't see how providing educational content is a scam. Um, he's put it out all on YouTube now for free. Anyways, but um, he did well with his uh, paid mentorships, and obviously, guys, uh, paid mentorships and making videos on the market and tutorials and written content does not come with the same risk of actually uh, day trading. So... That should be said. Uh, number two, he obviously derives uh, a significant amount of income from YouTube ad revenue. I don't think that's any secret. And then, you know, he uh, says that he doesn't have any sort of deals with Top Step or another prop firm, but he mentions Top Step a lot. And it's hard for me to imagine he's, he doesn't have any sort of back backdoor deals with anyone. Um, he does mention Top Step a lot. But I, again, I have nothing against that. Um, Guys, it's a tough world out there. You got to try and make money how you can, and um, I don't think that affiliate marketing is in any way particularly more evil than a, a lot of things that people do. So um, I don't, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with it. Um, and then he's obviously going to be selling a series of books, guys. It should be noted that he's going to derive royalty income from future book sales, and then other. Um, I don't know where the, where his other other sources of revenue come in. Some people think he might also sell used cars for a living. But anyways, guys, you should understand that ICT clearly does not derive all of his income from day trading. If he did, uh, well, he wouldn't be on Twitter and YouTube and deriving ad revenue. Right. So uh, it's clear to say that, no, he does not make uh, all of his income from uh, day trading. But guys, if he did make all of his income from day trading, then you would never have heard about any of his systems or his thoughts on the market. So uh, there's that. So now in this part of the video, I want to get to, all right, I love the markets. I want to talk about the markets, um, but I want to make some money while I'm doing it. How can I generate extra income without putting more capital at risk? So guys, day trading futures or forex involves substantial risk 
Um, all of the discla disclaimers are true. You can blow out your account in 20 minutes. Um, so unless you have extraordinary discipline, an extraordinary track record, and, and, and an extraordinary understanding of the market, day trading is very difficult. Uh, you should never be under the impression that day trading is easy. It's not. Um, but if you love talking about the markets and you want to make extra income, here are some of, here are some of my ideas. So number one, uh, create a brand. Um, start a YouTube channel. YouTube channels are free. Start a website. Uh, or you can start an LLC or incorporate yourself. Um, you know, I started the Art Trades brand uh, just just as a hobby. Um, I could obviously incorporate our, our trades if I wanted to. Um, there's a lot of things you can do when you incorporate guys. You can create a brand logo, um, create social media content. So start a YouTube channel. Uh, start start uh, a Twitter feed. Start posting your trade executions. Start um, talking about the market, guys. Uh, one thing that a lot of people are afraid about is they're afraid that they're going to get hate on the Internet. Uh, and one thing I'm just going to tell you guys is that if you put yourself out there, if you make content, it, it could be very simple videos like I do, which is just me talking at my laptop. Uh, you're always going to get haters. You're always going to get people that criticize what you do. And guys, you got to brush them aside. If you're going to become a content creator, if you're going to incorporate yourself, if you're going to try and become a, a business at what you're doing, including uh, talking about the stock market or talking about the futures market or Forex, you're all, there's always going to be people that don't like you and that want to throw, so to, so to speak, shade at you. And stay professional, stay on your grind, stay on the straight and narrow. Um, and you will become successful, guys. All you've got to do is start creating simple videos, uh, create a simple, a simple brand, and put out content on a, on a daily or a, or a weekly basis for one to two years, and you'll find that, that over time, with affiliate marketing, merchandising, branding, uh, and ad revenue, uh, you can generate a secondary income talking about the market um, and giving your thoughts about the market without actually putting more of your own capital at risk. So branding and incorporating YouTube and other social media content, create a following. Affiliate marketing, uh, guys, this is no secret. Um, affiliate marketing is one of the cheapest and easiest ways that as long as you're responsible with it, guys, and make sure that you're, you know, you're promoting brands that with which you agree or that you think are uh, ethical. I don't want you to do anything unethical, but um, yeah, obviously you can derive extra income by promoting other people's companies. There's really nothing new about that. Um, and I don't think it's particularly, there's anything particularly wrong with it. So be aware that obviously affiliate marketing is something that a lot of, a lot of content creators do and you shouldn't be uh, afraid to do it either tutorials, video series. So guys, if you have a proven track record day trading, or if you become ex experienced enough to where you have your own ideas about the market, your own um, models, or even if you want to sort of, without plagiarizing, regurgitate certain, certain things, uh, you can obviously sell that content, or you can derive YouTube ad revenue from that content. Um, there's nothing wrong with making professional videos and selling them, guys. People are used to, you got to think about the average consumer, guys. The average consumer pays for Netflix, YouTube, Google, Hulu. You know, there's nothing wrong with creating your own tutorials and video series. And if people want to, uh, if, if people want to watch your videos and tutorials and pay 15 bucks for it, I don't think there's anything particularly wrong with that. But you always have to have your required disclaimers um, and be, be, as, you know, be ethical and be lawful and try not to run afoul of any securities, uh, securities regulations. Uh, merchandise, guys, uh, create a, again, that goes back to branding and incorporating. Um, if you can sell T-shirts, sell sweatshirts, sell coffee mugs, that's another way to... to generate more income without putting more capital at risk. And then finally, guys, if you want to go really uh, in-depth, written material, books and eBooks, showing your models, um, your ideas on the market, that sort of thing. And then live streams. If you have the 
uh, professional setup. Uh, I, I don't, to, to be frank with you, um, and I don't have the internet to, to really live stream, and I'm also full-time employed, so this is not something that I can do. But um, people love watching live streams, and uh, that, that sort of thing. So, guys, you shouldn't be uh, foolish about ICT. Uh, it's whether or not he makes a substantial or an insubstantial amount of money uh, uh, derives uh, the majority of his income from day trading or not. Uh, you shouldn't be ignorant of the fact that obviously he does derive income from uh, non-day trading related activities. Uh, and that's okay, guys. There's there's really, I don't think, anything particularly wrong with that. So, uh, you know, it, I think that ICT could probably be more transparent. Um, but uh, do I think there's an, anything inherently wrong with running a side business, a hustle, you know, making YouTube videos, making podcasts is is real work. It requires effort, dedication. I don't think there's anything morally wrong with affiliate marketing, making videos, selling your content. Uh, as long as you've got something good to say, I don't I don't think there's anything wrong with charging people a fee to listen for for your services, like uh, like any other business. As long as you have the proper risk disclaimers regulatory disclaimers, uh, and you're acting ethically. I don't think there's anything wrong with it. Um, and so those are some of the ideas, guys, uh, and some of my comments and thoughts on ICT. Uh, first and foremost, guys, he is a salesman, uh, and I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with that, but you should be aware that he is a salesman. I think he could be more transparent on the income that he derives from YouTube, uh, and potentially he, he might have some affiliate deals that he doesn't disclose. Uh, I think he could be more transparent about that. But does that really invalidate, again, the basic claims about the market? Liquidity and inefficiencies? No, it doesn't. You will find over time that the market uh, really does seem to be acting on liquidity signatures and inefficiencies. Watch the market day in and day out and really study it uh, from firsthand experience, you will find these things to be to be largely uh, true. So, anyways, that's uh, my pretty middle of. I think this is a pretty middle of the road, um, middle of the road presentation, and these are some working thoughts I have on ICT fact versus fiction. Thank you. Bye bye.